What's up, everybody? So I've noticed in the last, I don't know, few weeks, there's been a lot of activity on my channel in regards to all the Rex Viper videos I made, the AVGN video I made, a lot of people commenting, it's back in the algorithms for some reason, and then it occurred to me that like, oh yeah, it has been kind of a year since all the controversy happened, since the plagiarism, the Rex Viper, all that. So maybe the algorithms are doing some weird, you know, smiling upon my old videos and showing it to more people. So I thought I was like, I, you know, let me just take a look at what what does Cinemassacre look like in 2022? Because I don't look at the channel directly. I just watch the AVGN videos when they pop up whenever I have time, because that's really all I've ever come there for. I, all the other stuff never really interests me that much. So we'll take a look at that. And um yeah, this is Dancing with Ghosts. So let's start with that video he released in January 2022 where he's talking about his love for VHS tapes. I like videos like these when he does these little one-offs that don't really have anything to do with anything. Uh, he's done these before with like, uh, I remember for the Sega Genesis versus the Super Nintendo video, he was not in character as the nerd. He just wanted to do a video comparing the two co consoles. I guess one could argue the chronologically confused videos aren't necessarily related to video games. I mean, he did one about Rocky. So, I mean, I, when he does these kind of videos, I, I enjoy them. So, I enjoyed watching the video. And, you know, when James is off script... He's really bad at communication. We really want to go to hell. We can pull it off. Mm. You can see this in the podcast that they did where he, you know, most of the ScreenWave guys were doing most of the talking or whether it was rental reviews or even James and Mike Monday, which a lot of people really like. But I always just felt like Mike Matei did most of the heavy lifting in terms of like the conversation and talking and everything. But when James is on script, I think he's one of the best, honestly. I love his uh, scripted narrations about, you know, whatever he's talking about, whether it's a, a video game or a movie or a behind the scenes thing or whatever. So I thought it was a good video, but it was at the end. It was like the last 20 seconds where he he basically buried the indicator that the channel was going in a different direction. So check it out. I'm happy to have been able to preserve it through my videos. I love being able to share this stuff. I hope to be able to do this as long as I can. This channel is all about remembering a simpler time. And if that's the kind of stuff you want to see, well, stay tuned. He was really trying to drive that point home with that kind of semi-cheesy string music that was a little much, but uh, yeah, I, I think he was really trying to indicate that, hey, look, I know I fucked up. I know the channel has lost its focus and its quality because I've let all these other strangers come in and basically take over and... Um, you know, as far as them being involved on camera from now on, like those days are over. And it's like, thank God you figured it out, James Bimmy. You did it. You figured out that nobody gives a flying fuck about these screen wave slobs. And they are, they, from my knowledge, unless I've missed something, they have not been on screen for any of the videos in 2022. So, yeah, I mean, I would definitely say. Uh, Cinemasker as a whole has improved, not because of what they added, but what they've taken away. First off, let's start off with that god-awful podcast where you have, yet again, these ScreenWave guys on there who are doing most of the talking and interacting with James like they're all good friends, like they're trying to copy the Kyle Justin and Mike Matei formula, but it's totally fake and phony and forced. That's been canceled. And then you have rental reviews, which has been canceled, which is another thank God because, you know, James just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, while well, everyone else is doing all the talking. And then, you know, just any of the other little one-off things that they would have on the channel where it would be Kieran and, and, and uh, Justin doing some VR thing. And it's just like, who cares? This is the thing, man. I know I've done a lot of videos making fun of the screen wave slobs or whatever and even the name screen wave slobs is obviously a derogatory term but the thing is is like you have to look at the juxtaposition here in one corner you have james rolf who is uh 
undebatably the YouTuber that I've watched for the longest amount of time, for almost 10 years now. He's brought me a lot of inter free entertainment and joy, uh, made me get into becoming a YouTuber myself, um, has garnered a cult following of thousands upon thousands of fans because of his great and consistent work. And then in this corner, you have th three or four unknown slobby no aesthetic whatsoever just nobodies who has this channel that i've never fucking heard of and they're just in all the videos and it's just like wait excuse me what is your name again who are you why should i care this legend is uh not saying anything you guys are doing all the talking what the fuck is going on and so that's why there's so much anger from me about these guys and they're forming bands now. And it's just like Mike Mate and Kyle Justin and James were all legitimately friends, especially James and Mike. There was a authenticity to their interactions and their friendship. And that was seen in things such as Board James. And I mean, even with the fans with Mike Mate, it took them forever to accept Mike into the fold because everyone was just so fixated on James. But... It eventually happened, and you know what? I mean, despite all of his weird bullshit that he did on the side, I I really, I liked Mike. I thought he was fucking hilarious as Bugs Bunny and the Joker in the actual AVGM episodes. Like, just that over-the-top, just cheesy acting was fucking hilarious to me. It still is to this day. Like, um, Kyle was in a couple episodes of The Nerd, but it totally made sense because he wrote the fucking theme song. You know, and then Bootsy was a beloved character in Board James, but I didn't really watch Board James, so I can't really speak on that. But um, yeah, so it's like it was so organic that like you didn't mind and it made sense that there would be a James and Mike Mondays. No one was going, wait, who the fuck's Mike? Everyone knew who Mike was. They're trying to replicate that with all this screen wave bullshit with these podcasts and these rental reviews, but it's like you've established nothing with any of these people. They are not your friends. They are they are your corporate buddies that is a business relationship only. Like they there's no authenticity there and nobody cares about who they are or what the fuck they have to say. I'm sorry, but that that's the general consensus. There might be a few fans out there for some of these guys, but they are few and far between. So anyway, going back to reviewing uh, the AVGN Cinemasker channel uh, in 2022, uh, I did not watch most of the videos on there. I just mainly watched the AVGN episodes. Uh, I did see the Rocky video. It was a little hokey, but I mean, honestly, I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, it just, I don't know, James seems like he, he's his spirit is back to a certain degree, you know? I mean, is it ever? Is he ever going to be able to summon up that youthful anger to, to yell at some old video game again? No, I don't think so. And I think all of the angry video game episodes uh, going forward will suffer from the fact that there's, no, there's just no way he's getting that upset anymore about video games. I just think he's like, okay, time to record another AVGN episode. This game's a shitload of fuck, you know? <laughs> I just... If you listen to... If you go back and watch those early episodes, there is, like, rage in his voice legitimately. Like, he's legitimately like, Jump! Come on! Why won't you fucking hit the... Get, get on the ledge! Or whatever. And it's just like, he just doesn't get that angry anymore. It's not... Uh, it's not as uh, convincing, but that doesn't mean that they're not good. Um, I'll go through them here in a second. Uh, let me just say the 200th episode that, you know, everyone was making a big to do about on, uh, over there on the Cinemasker camp. Um, I, I just thought it was like a very tedious episode. Uh, the idea, the idea was like, not, I mean, okay, he's got this this war with LJN, and so the 200th episode is going to be about yet more LJN content. It's like, haven't we heard enough about fucking LJN? And um, I just, I thought it was, I thought it was a tedious watch. I mean, he was going through um, every uh, LJN game on the uh, original Nintendo, and it's like, dude, we've already seen a lot of these episodes and, and he would just insert like the, the games that he's already done. He would just insert those clips into the 
uh, show into the 200th episode. So now I'm having to rewatch uh, all these reviews that I've already seen a hundred times each, you know, back in the day because I was such a huge AVGN fan. And it was just like, oh, God, it, it was it was a slog to get through for sure. But anyway, now heading into 2022, after the uh, VHS video, uh, we get The Last Ninja, <clears throat> which was pretty cool because it was like, I guess, some bonus footage on one of his DVDs from the past of a of, uh, review that never made it on to uh, Cinemas or uh, was it Screw Attack, which then moved on to YouTube or whatever. So... We get to see a young James, and then he kind of transitions in the video um, to old, like, current James, who was finishing the review, and um, that was pretty cool. Um, And the game itself was genuinely, like, looked really bad, so that always helps for a good nerd episode when the game, like, genuinely, like, looks, like, just you can see with your own eyes how, man, this game looks broken as hell. Uh, then in April, he released Contra and how he remembered it, which was a pretty good video. I mean, who doesn't like Contra? And uh, it's nice to get James's take on games um, that are good That and how he like kind of dissects it and like the various characteristics to that particular game, like the Mario 3 video where he's actually talking about how it's actually a great game and he kind of breaks it down or whatever. Um, in June, we get uh, Purr Pals on Wii, which I literally only watched about halfway through when I decided that, like, yeah, this is not the content that I I came for. So I just kind of, like, yeah, that, that video was not good. Um, he skips two whole months, and then he drops Hudson Hawk in late August. And this was where I really started noticing James's receding hairline. I know that's it's the fucking elephant in the room when you watch that video. Uh, that was the one where like everyone in the like started this huge comment thread, and everyone was just commenting on it. Like, my God, dude! Like, you, it's getting distracting at this point. Like. You know, it's getting, it's really getting to that point to where like you either, you either got to shave it off or just to, cause, cause James is so meticulous about the nerd character, right? So like, how is, he's going to have to make an episode where he like writes in a bit where a game is so bad that it causes James to lose his hair completely. And, and from there on out he'll always have a shaved head, you know, because that game was just so bad. He's probably already thinking about angles on how to do that. Um, But, I mean, like, Doug Walker, the nostalgia critic, at least Doug Walker always wore a hat anyway, so when he lost his hair, um, it wasn't as noticeable because he was still wearing the hat anyway. And he he even did write an entire episode of Nostalgia Critic. I forget what the movie was, but basically, like, because the characters in the movie were, were bald, like, it gave him an excuse to also be bald for the character that he was going to play. And they just were like, oh, wow, what happened to your hair? And he's like, eh, don't worry about it. They just kind of played it down. And then every episode after that, he just had a shaved head, and they've just never really made much of a fuss about it after that. But, um, yeah, that's something that that's something he's definitely going to have to deal with. But, uh, anyway, Hudson Hawk, uh, it was a very middling review. It was one that you might find back in the day when James didn't have the time to – do like a high production video so he would do like a video where he mainly just showed game footage narrated did a little bit of couch shots and you know that was pretty much it that's kind of what this review was like but you know that's not necessarily a bad thing because I don't know some of my favorite episodes by him back in the day were the lower production value ones in fact some of my least favorite AVGN episodes are the high production ones like the one with Gilbert Gottfried or the one, the Christmas one that everyone hates with like that sma- everything is smashable in the room that they're in, and they got that goofy guy who I guess was some kind of st- stunt actor. I don't know who the guy was, but he apparently has some kind of credentials in Hollywood. And then, I mean, I know James always cites this video as like loving it, but that fear and loathing in Las Vegas video, I could not give two shits about. Like, I think he got a little. I think he went a little overboard there on that one, but <clears throat> that's just me. Uh, the last AVGN video w- was dropped just in time for Halloween, very recent, um, and he's talking about all the Doom games. And, you know, even though that idea is a little stale at this point, because I feel like 
everybody pretty much knows at this point that Doom's been ported to everything, and and I'm sure there's been a lot of other lesser video game creators out there who have done this idea. So the fact that this would be even like something that AVGN would have done, it seems a little stale. But it was it was still a really good video. Um, it, it really like harken back to the good higher production videos he used to do like the one with the super mecha death christ one or those those kind of um you know using his graphic talents you know and but keeping it small but still keep, keeping it really interesting um he's going through all the doom games and as i'm watching it i'm like man this feels so like I know he did the Atari Jaguar one, but it just fe- feels like such an idea he's already done. But it was still good, though. It was still good. It was a good uh, episode. I enjoyed it. Um, I don't watch Monster Madness, so I can't really compare that to how it is now to how it was. Hopefully, they fixed that plagiarizing problem. Pretty sure they would. They did because somebody would have called them out by now if they haven't because their fans are very meticulous. Um so I mean, I say I would say at the end of the day, the right changes were made, and uh, you know the channel is back where it should be. And um, you know I, I don't just make videos to tear things down. I point out problems that I see, and when someone makes the right decision, uh, I I call that out too. And I think that uh, everything's felt a lot more. I guess sounds so corny, but more soulful. I guess because it felt soulless for a very long time. And now it feels like some of the soul is coming back. So, like, I, I hope that, you know, things stay like this. And, you know, I know the Screen Wave guys are still involved. But as long as they're not on camera and as long as they're not opening their mouths to, you know, uh, contribute their opinions, then I'm perfectly fine with them helping James out with the production. I don't, I don't feel that James has to physically play every video game and physically do every single thing for it to be a good episode. I just don't want to see the screen wave guys on on screen and i don't want to hear them talking and it seems like uh they fixed that but uh he he is going to have to find an angle for that baldness thing man because uh the 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 cul-de-sac male pattern baldness that's starting to get really distracting anyway uh what do you think do you think it's just fucked and it's never going to be as good again because after the movie it just everything was ruined and I still think that theory is crazy that people think the movie ruined everything. Um, let me know in the comments below and it's floating around me here. I've done a bunch of videos on AVGN. Uh, this will be my fourth one at this point. Um, so make sure you check those out. And uh, yeah, until then, have a good rest of your night. We really want to go to hell. We can pull it off.